Welcome back. We are going to run down our top three RPGs, role-playing games of all time. Muff, you want to kick things off? What are your top three RPGs of all time? Number three, uh, Shining Force. Mm -hmm. This uh, Sega Genesis. Uh, I traded an uh, old tube TV for this game. And uh, I used to watch Arsenio Hall all night long. <laughs> and uh, so basically, I traded Arsenio Hall for Shining Force. And uh, this is actually where I found my love for RPGs because uh, it was turn based. And I played other games, probably not realizing they're RPGs, but Shining Force was the, at a time, I, was, I don't know, fuck shit, I don't know. 12? I don't fucking know how it was. But it was uh, really freaking groundbreaking for me. Because uh, uh, the turn-based part, you get your main character. Uh, you get to name him, which is really cool. You got to name your own character. Um, you go off with a little party of like three or four. And throughout, you get like up to like 20-some different playable characters... And you take a party of, like, maybe eight or so out with you. So you had to strategize, like, okay, what am I going to need for, like, these upcoming bosses and armies and shit? And so you had to think, like, you had your, your mages and your archers, uh, how they can do a lot of damage from a distance, but they real soft and get fucked up if they get caught up front. And then you had to have your meaty people up front. And uh, with the turn base, each one had like a different grid as far as like uh, like one character might be able to move like ten paces while the other one can only move like four. Uh, some can attack diagonal. Some have to be like dead on. And so you really had to think uh, – and it wasn't just a flat play. I mean like all the different battling locations – uh, sometimes there's narrow ridges to where all you have are like two lanes, and you had to strategize for the two lanes. Sometimes you had wide open areas, sometimes you had shit in between obstructing you, so you had to be really smart and careful. And uh, I, I mean, looking back at it now, it's almost like, uh, I mean, like how chess has certain players' uh, pieces that can do different moves uh, and. Uh, can be taken out different ways, and uh, at the time, I never really thought about it like that, but looking back, at it, it really is the whole strategy of turn base, and I love that a lot more than the action, where you can just go in and just start hacking for 50 hours, just swing away, uh, whereas with turn base, it's like, no, you make a wrong move, you're fucked, and, uh, but just, just the, I mean, from way back then, uh, to me, it just opened a whole new world and respect for my love for role-playing games. And uh, so that one, uh, very fair to say, <coughs> top three RPGs. Most that was the first Shining Force, right? Shining Force 1, yes. Yeah, okay, that came out in uh, July of 1993 in North America, so you would have been 36 at the time. <laughs> <laughs> My girlfriend was still 19. You're right, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you never played 2, Buff? Uh, Shining Force 2? I think I started it, but uh, by the time I got around to being able to play it, I had already had kids, and I was working all the time, and they're just... I was not at a spot um, when I found it to have the time to dedicate to it. Because uh, I only played 2. You never know. I really like 2. You like two a lot? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I, I never played one. I only played two, but two was a lot of fun. I may look into it and play it again because uh, it, it, you never played one, so you don't know. So I won't ask you anything about it then. So, uh, number two, uh, Final Fantasy XI. Now, y'all know my background with Holy Assassin, uh, Smoofius, Mills up in there, <laughs> and... Rainwater and or Rainwater E. Yeah. And so how uh 
oh, and there was just El Generico. Y'all know that was an interesting thing. Um, but how I got introduced <laughs> to this is it came in – I used to get the Xbox magazine. And uh, I didn't get the one for Final Fantasy XI, but Moose did. And Moose gave it to Holy Assassin to give to me. So because of Moose, I gave up over a whole year of real life playing this game. Thanks, You're Moose. <laughs> and that's not, an bottom, you, that's not an exaggeration, right? You have like a year of real in-game time, right, in that game? Not an exaggeration. Over a year of real game playing time, yes. Uh, literally... Uh, I, I had insomnia probably up until my early to mid thirties, and I, 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 I back in ninety three. I like, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I'd, I'd, I'd work from like noon to midnight. Get off work at midnight. Go to Steak and Shake. Dark Side U was there a lot mm-hmm. of times. I'd be home by two. I'd be playing Final Fantasy till five. Wake my kids up. Get them ready to school. Get them off to school. I'd play a little bit more, sleep for like two, three hours, and then I'd go back to work, and I'd do the whole wash, rinse, repeat. And if I had a day off, that's all I did. Um, and it was it was perfect for me because uh, as a single dad, you ain't got that other help. It's just all you. So the kids went down to seven. You couldn't go to pub. You couldn't go rub one out. You had to find something to do to where if they walk out, you're there. And so Final Fantasy XI was perfect for me. Uh, but that that game, I mean, I could go on. It, it, it also had that like, warning. Uh, it also had that warning. Remember, like, remember you have a life and all that stuff? In the beginning no, of the game? No, it did not have that warning. Did they have the warning? No. <laughs> I thought I just, it did. I, yeah, I, I did. thought you were right. <laughs> did have Mark that chose to ignore it. He just didn't you know, see it. He's like, fuck that warning. <laughs> Most MMORPGs probably tell you to take breaks. Yeah, I thought I it think, said, like, uh, remember you have a life and all this stuff, like, think, before yeah. the game came up. Yeah. I'm, pr- I'm like, 90 blacked out during that part. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Eyes rolled back in his, in his head, and he just freaking started playing, man. There was. If, if, if I had any free time, I, I was either playing Final Fantasy XI or I was at Strip Club. Those only two things. You needed a laptop so you could do both. <laughs> All right, Mom, number one. You got number one. <laughs> so I, I can't. I'm gonna name a couple games. So I can't really just say one specific game, but as a category, sports. Starting with <laughs> baseball stars, because <laughs> baseball stars, you got to own a team. And you got to level up your players as they got better, as you made more money. And so that had a little bit of role playing to it. And then Madden came out with franchise mode. And I fell in love with being an owner. I got to create a stadium, own it, design my own jerseys. I got to do the drafting, the trading, uh, leveling up uh, the players as they got better. Uh, you got to talk to the media. You you got to price the tickets, concessions, uh, jerseys, and all that shit. It, you had to do all of that. It's not just you pick up Madden and you play a game of football. It was all the behind the shit scene that you uh, do as the role of the owner. And really, Madden 2010. Uh, I probably played that one more than anything, but all the Maddens afterwards, anytime I buy it, I just buy it for franchise mode. Or uh, Ultimate Team, I do like Ultimate Team a little bit, but mainly for franchise mode. To this day, I'll, I'll, I'll wake up Saturday mornings and I'll put in four or five hours in a new franchise just to try to do it a little bit different than last time. Uh, but Madden 2010, my kids still have nightmares anytime a song comes on the radio because that thing, Melbro, listen up. Best motherfucking soundtrack in any goddamn <laughs> video game. I'm just gonna name a couple of these bitches for you. Beastie Boys, Alice in Chains, Black Sabbath, Cypress Hill, Peter <laughs> Rock, Nirvana, Public Enemas, <laughs> System of a Down, and my man Tupac. 
So, <laughs> too bad. <laughs> My kids have flashbacks of like, damn, dad's playing Madden 2010 again. <laughs> Childhood trauma and, and price and concession. Sounds like a great RPG. <laughs> you, you, it's RPG. You playing role as franchise owner. And uh, number one, cream of the crop, Tech Bowl Super Bowl. You got to be worn motherfucking <laughs> moves, man. <laughs> you throw the Ernest Kingdoms, Blue Hill, Ernest Tompkins. Mm. Pimp stash. All right, Dark Dark Side, what you got for your top three (laughs) RPGs role-playing games of all time? I don't play a lot of RPGs, uh, so I had a hard time finding three that I played that weren't the ones from this month. Um, (laughs) But uh, uh, one of them was uh, South Park, The Stick of Truth. Um, I I used to be a huge South Park fan, and uh, I thought that game was great, you know. It uh, made me laugh, and it looked just like the the series, and it was a decent game. <laughs> so that was one. Yeah, the Western parents book. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, That's I've, yeah. I've only ever beaten one Final Fantasy game in my life, and that was Final Fantasy X. Um, so I put that on the list because I actually did love that game. It is probably in my top twenty games of all time. Um. So there's that. So how did you know who Sephiroth was? I don't know, because I'm a gamer. (laughs) 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 I'm I'm a real gamer, you know? I platinum things, and, uh, you know? You probably played Final Fantasy VII. You just didn't beat it, right? Yes, I I did play Final Fantasy VII uh, back in the day, but I I couldn't get into it, and then my brother yelled at me, so I stopped playing it. (laughs) Um. Last RPG, one that I played um, a lot, I put a couple hundred hours into it, was Fantasy Star Online. Ooh, on the Dreamcast? Uh, on the, uh, I did it on the Dreamcast, and then I also did it on the original Xbox. Mm. Yep. Um, played a shit ton of that. Um, it was a lot of fun, you know, before its time. Um, I know they have one out... Uh, on modern consoles now, I think it's what Fantasy Star Online two or some shit, but yeah. I, I haven't got into it yet. Yeah, I downloaded that and none of y'all else played, so <laughs> yeah, I downloaded I, it too. I, I never played it. I think yeah, I tried we, it once. We, we all downloaded it and then just let it sit there. I've got a quick story about Fantasy Star Online. This is my first time playing an online game on the Dreamcast, and I met this guy, and he what? said. He had this, like, chow, like, from Sonic the Hedgehog series on his shoulder. It was, like, a familiar or whatever, like, a side Uh character. And they're really hard to get. And I was just starting out, and I was like, he's like, oh, I'll trade it to you for whatever money you have. And I was like, oh, I only have 2,000, whatever the money was. He's like, yeah, that's fine. He goes, just drop your money. So I drop the money. He picks up the money. He calls me a racial slur, and then he runs away. And I was like, well, this is just a great introduction to online gaming. That really opened my eyes to what online gaming is all about. Yep. Literally <laughs> nothing yep. has changed yeah. since then. <laughs> so that was my, I'm sorry I took your money, you Brian. Get, you couldn't get your money back? <laughs> oh, no. There was, no, he ran with my money and his chow, and I was left there fucking holding my dick. You know? Classic. <laughs> All right, Melbro, what you got for your top three RPGs of all time? Top three of all, so kind of like Dark Side. I haven't played a lot, and I'm not a big RPG fan, but th- these three are exceptions. So, uh, number three, Grandia Two. So I, I played that uh, on Dreamcast. Um, this was the you know, I don't know why I I play, picked this game because I didn't play any of the other Grandias, but for some reason, you know, I ended up buying this game when I was younger. I had a blast with it. I like the combat style. It was kind of different based, but it was like the characters would kind of like move around and like strategically go behind opponents and stuff. And I thought that was cool at the time. So I put a lot of hours into that. Um, you know, and I also like RPGs where like the characters don't randomly spawn. I like knowing when I'm going to fight an enemy 
And yeah, I think yeah, uh, yeah, there wasn't like random respawns on there. Um, so Grandia was was pretty dope. Number two, I don't know if the, I don't know if you, any of you guys ever heard of this game. It's called uh, Legacy of Lagaya. Have any of you heard of this? Yeah, I've heard of it. Heard Never it. played it. Oh, okay. it. Yeah, PlayStation, this game was so. Yeah, PlayStation One. Yeah, I, I, this this was so dope, man. Because um, it was kind of like a combination. I've never seen a game like this before, even to this day. It was an RPG, but it was also like a fighting game. So it was like a combination. So it was like turn based, but you would actually like do like fi- fighting moves, like up, down, up, back, forth, square, and like do combos on the enemy. So it was kind of like a. Imagine if they had like a an RPG game. That's what it was like, almost. And it was like you would uh do all these crazy moves and like combos and the characters, you know, use these uh you know combinations and stuff. So it, it was it was cool, man, and it progressed pretty cool. The story was pretty dope, so I enjoyed that a lot. Put a lot of hours into that. I wish I could play it now, but I'm sure uh, there's no way this would ever get ported. And, and number one uh for me was Pokemon. Uh, I guess you can say red, yellow, whichever, blue. Um, but that first Pokemon um, game on the Game Boy, uh, man, I, I played a lot of that, man. You know, all all the different Pokemon, catching them all when I was younger. Uh, uh, yeah, that kind of really introduced me to the show. You know, I was watching it when I was younger and uh, fell in love with the game, man. Just uh, pretty dope, man. I've never beat a Pokemon game in my neither, life. Neither have I. <laughs> yeah, I've never played a Pokemon game in my life. Never I'm playing Pokemon. the hell out of some Pokemon nope. Go right now. Yeah, I've never played either. Yeah, Muff man, plays Pokemon out. Go every day. Muff <laughs> plays Pokemon Go. Yeah, the closest <laughs> thing I did is yeah, Don- Donkey Congo, where you did the Pokemon theme with the. <laughs> that was the closest you got thing enough, I got. You, Yeah, you got enough <laughs> out of that. Yeah. So yeah, All right. that was it for me, man. All right, Spyro, what you got for your top three? So it's hard for me to just name three. Um, so I have a few honorable mentions that I'll just mention really quickly. Um, I got into RPGs when I was super young, so these are very old games. But uh, I'd say the original Fantasy Star on the Sega Genesis, or was it Master System? I can't remember. The but, very uh, first one was Master System, yeah. Yes. Then I'm probably thinking of Fantasy Star 2, which was on Sega Genesis, I believe. Yeah, yeah. Um, that was a great game. I had a TurboGrafx-16 CD back in the day, and it had East Book 1 and 2, uh, yeah. which which, uh, <laughs> which I really, really liked back, you know, 25, 30 years ago. Um, and then a little bit more modern, my, my final honorable mention is uh, Skyrim, uh, Elder Scrolls. Um, I think that was kind of a gom- groundbreaking oh, game. Um, why? Because you turn into a vampire and can figure out how to turn back into a human? Was that it, Muff? <laughs> <laughs> okay, so I turn, they turn me into a goddamn vampire. I could only go out at night. And so I literally am stuck most of the goddamn day in a fucking pub. I, I completely maxed out all of my fucking magic because I'm just standing there. It looks like I'm fucking whacking off. And I'm just like, oh, yeah, you got all them damn stats maxed out. And vampires. Oh, fuck. I like being a vampire, though. But I couldn't fuck that game. <laughs> <laughs> and then going to the top three. Um, my number three is Dragon Age Inquisition for the Xbox um, 360. It took you, like, five years. Yeah, I put probably 200 hours into that game. Uh, 250 hours into that game. Um, it, the Dragon Age series was my first... My first... Um, foray into like the uh the 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 united states or the eastern rpg you know the action rpg not the turn-based japanese type games so it was my uh my first experience with a game like that um which had like the classic dragons and medieval story and um, knights and things like that uh the the interplay with the party um the different characters you can add to your party or or could leave your party um it was my first foray into actually romancing a character which i think is Pretty cool nowadays. Um, even this game is probably my first foray to seeing like nudity in a game uh, when you romance certain characters. Um, it just was a, definitely a, a big change in the RPGs used to play back in the day. Like a huge change from even like a Skyrim or a obviously a fantasy, fantasy star or a Final Fantasy, uh, more adult themes and things like that. So that's my number three. That uh, was my back num- when uh, Bioware was making good games, right? Exactly. <laughs> exactly. Before the EA takeover. Yeah. Yeah. 
Um, yeah, Bioware is probably one of my favorite developers before EA bought them. Um, I did like uh, the last Mass Effect, though. I thought that was a, that was a pretty good game. Speaking of Mass Effect, my number two is Mass Effect 2. Uh, this game has a 96 out of 100 score on Metacritic, so it is one of the best games of all time. Um, just different characters, the theme. I really like the sci-fi theme, exploring planets, uh, uh, meeting new alien races, making the first contact, the weapons. They really kind of dropped most a lot of the RPG themes from the first game. They scaled it back down and made it more of an action RPG with like Gears of War type action where you can hide behind um, crates and behind cover and duck out of cover and use sniper rifles and things like that. It really melded the action RPG uh, or created really the action RPG genre uh, in my in my estimation. Um, again, the romance of characters is really cool. Lots of replay value because you want to go back and romance different characters, different alien races. Um, I think Muff brought this up. A, th- a really cool thing with these uh, Eastern RPGs, US RPGs, is creating your character. I thought that was really neat. You can spend hours just creating your character from the facial features, even deciding what gender you want to be. Um, I like that kind of uh, customization. So, yeah, Mass Effect 2 was an amazing game. Really good voice acting, too. You know, they had some, I guess you'd call them B level type actors, but I think for a video game, it's cool to have like people like Seth Green. Uh, Martin Sheen, uh, Trisha Helfer, uh, voice characters in video games. Martin Sheen? Yeah, he was the um, elusive man in Mass Effect. Yeah, that's pretty big voice actor. Mm-hmm. I, I, number- I, I gotta say, when you get a chance, uh, so sorry, when you get a chance, you, you're about to start a game. You just gave them your money. You're about to invest in it. You get an opportunity to create a character from scratch. I mean, they're not going to have unlimited sources, but you get to design them the exact way that you want to. You're going to be more invested in that game and have a lot more fun playing it. I, I, I'll forget what game it was, PS2, some. It was a baseball game, and you got to create a character, and you could use the. You guys remember that little camera, the little toy? I toy. I toy. Yeah. You could take a picture, and you could put it on that baseball car- character. Yeah. And yeah. so I took a picture of my dick and I put it on his head. And I ain't kidding you, Doc. I played a whole season with my dick pitching. Bunch of spitballs then? Is that what it was? Bunch, bunch of lobs, apparently. Oh, yes. <laughs> yeah. That bunch wasn't awesome, bad party you seen out there. Bunch of floaters. Bunch of knuckleballs and balls. <laughs> oh my gosh. It's a new meaning to a dick pic there, Muff. <laughs> Mass Effect 2, you I said, had a 96 it. on Metacritic? I believe so. Oh, that's almost as good as Super Mario Galaxy 2. That's impressive. <laughs> <laughs> and then um, going back, oh, yeah, going back to my number one. You guys already mentioned it. Uh, uh, Moose played the remake, but Final Fantasy VII for the PlayStation uh, is my favorite RPG. Probably my favorite game of all time. Um, it really was such a huge change for me. Uh, a sea change from playing cartridges to playing like CDs um, on systems. And just the change with that, with the voice and the music and the graphic upgrades. Like It was a huge, huge change. And uh, it's it was kind of a, an... In- I think it was an amazing time to actually live through that era when you're going from kind of basic cartridges that some people lick and eat to actually playing <laughs> um, CDs, you know, with lots and lots of memory and, and enhancement of graphics and, and voice acting. Um, it, uh, it, it, it was the reason I bought a PlayStation was uh, to play that game. And uh, I think consensus when the, uh, one of the greatest games of all time. Uh, memorable characters from Sephiroth to Cloud to uh, Tifa and Aerith. Um, just an amazing game. I, I think I was blown away in general by the game from the beginning, from the music and the intro and the beginning couple hours of the game. Um, but I knew it was this was some real shit. When I opened the game, it was three discs. Yeah. You know, that's it. yeah. I was like, oh, fuck, I'm in for a game here when it's got more than one disc here. Um so yeah, that's my favorite game of all time and my favorite RPG game of all time. 
All right. Moose, what you got for your favorite RPGs of all time? Top three. Okay, so I'm going to cheat a little bit like Spiral. I'm going to do an honorable mention first. World of Warcraft, uh, basically same story as Moff. I was kind of addicted for a while. Um, my number three, I'm going to say, is Final Fantasy IX. Um, I played that game like right when it came out, and I, I loved it. I mean, I, I pushed through that game pretty quickly, I think relatively quickly. Um, if you remember, Brian, I was back when we were all hanging out, and I kept on talking about spoilers. I'm not going to say it again. I mean, we talked about it, about the spoiler oh, yeah. another time. Oh, but, yeah. uh, I just, I mean, it, the story shocked me. The gameplay was like back to the old school, like medieval type settings, and it was just really awesome. Um, number two, Final Fantasy VII, the old one, uh, you know, the original one, and the remake. I guess I can probably bundle them together. It's it's up there. Um, number one, I'm going to go with Chrono Trigger. I guess mm. another honorable mention is going to be Final Fantasy VI on the Super Nintendo. But uh, Chrono Trigger, man, that game, it took me a long time to actually get around to beating it. But I, I think I've owned... So now I own, I think, three copies of that game on different platforms just because I like it so much. So I just want to play it if I want to, I guess. So I got it on Steam. <laughs> I used to have the cartridge. I actually sold it. So I don't have that one anymore, the Super Nintendo uh, cartridge. Uh, but I have it on Steam. I have it on my phone. And, uh, you know, it's a, it's a great game. And I'm, I'm going to play it again eventually. I just don't know where yet. Did you do a lot of the New Game Plus stuff with that? I think I did it. On the Super Nintendo, I don't think I I've never I never beat it on the other like the Android version because when it first came out I, I think I got it on Steam like really soon after it came out and it was really buggy and screwy but they fixed it and then the price drop on mobile I think I got it for five bucks but I had like points and I got it for free essentially but yeah I haven't I haven't done the new game plus I got to do that um, but I got to beat it with the new save file first nowadays. Because that's, like, the big thing with that game, right? All the multiple endings and, like, you yeah. can just skip right to the final boss, like, at the yep. beginning of the game if you want. Yeah. yeah, that's cool. Yeah, it's a pretty cool game. I mean, it's just, like, and I love the art style because, you know, we were all big into Dragon Ball Z, and it's the same, you know, art director yeah. or designer or whatever, but it was it was just awesome. Like, it, 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 like, there's never been a Dragon Ball Z game nearly on the same level as that game. And, I mean, it's a square game, so, you know, what are you going to do? I've never seen an episode of Dragon Ball Z. You should watch all of them. Yeah. Tonight. <laughs> <laughs> what? <laughs> all right, Bash, what you got for your top three RPGs of all time? Another kind of honorable mention. The RPG I probably played the most of was Final or Fantasy Star Online. Probably have like 300 hours into it eventually, but the hackers got too bad by the end, so I just stopped playing it. <laughs> It was fun while it lasted. Right? Dreamcast, right? Yeah. And then on the GameCube one, it got bad, too. But I guess number three, probably... Let's say Shining Force 2, actually. We mentioned that before. I've actually played both of them, like the first two. I prefer the second one. The first one is pretty good, too. Uh, is, is the second one similar to one, as far as, like, gameplay? Yeah, like, the story's more involved and stuff, and it's a little more open-world, kind of. But if you like the first one, I guess it's a no-brainer. Play the second one, too. Uh, it's easy to get, it. too. Thanks, you can Bash. get it on everything. Number two is probably Final Fantasy VI. That was probably the first RPG I really got into. I think I might have beaten it four or five times now. I'd do that. I'd just beat Man. the same RPG over and over again instead of starting new ones. <laughs> My favorite of all time is probably Final Fantasy V. I think I've literally beaten that uh, probably seven or eight times. <laughs> Part of the reason of that is, like, uh, I think I mentioned it before, there's the four-job fiesta thing that happens every spring. It's like this website you go to, and then you uh, draw a random team that you have to use through the entire game. You know, like, stuck with jo those jobs, specifically. And, yeah, you got to come up with a new strategy every time. It, like, never really gets old. It's kind of getting old now. I haven't played it in about a year, but, like, yeah, that one's really addictive. That game was pretty fun. I beat it recently, like, so, last year, I think, for the first time. It's yeah. a good game. 
So you saying it's almost like lottery balls pop out and say, okay, this, this is the type of characters you have to use? You gotta send them like there's like a Twitter you send a message to, and then they send you back which character you get to use. You gotta do that like four times. Not care what job class you put on each character, but yeah. When was the first time you played that Bash? Like, what system was uh, it on? I think it was on the PlayStation when it finally it got ported over with a uh, Final Fantasy five and six. Yeah, got it, got it. those ports weren't very good, but the game played good enough. So did they add yeah, like enhanced I... cutscenes with that when they ported that? I don't remember. It publicized that a lot, but it was only like two cutscenes and that looked like shit. So oh yeah, all right. <laughs> yeah, the Game Boy Advance version is probably the best because it added a couple extra like hidden classes and. Uh, Kind of balance things a little better, but yeah. Yeah, that's the version I played, the Game Boy Advance one. Yeah. All right, I'm gonna run. I'm gonna run down my top three RPGs. So I'll do an honorable mention. Um, Xenoblade. So I played that game. It felt like it just took forever because you I was Xeno just... Gears. Oh yeah, what did I what did I say? Xenoblade. Yes, I yeah. mean Xeno Gears. Yes, Xeno Gears for the PlayStation. Um. So I mean I spent so much time just level grinding and shit like that like bash and moose i'm sure you guys came over and watched me just level grind that forever um that game was really cool but my top three number three i'm gonna go with half minute hero so this was a game on the playstation portable and it's called half minute hero because the battles happen (laughs) the battles happen super quickly and it's not like your traditional rpg where like you're like doing like actual like inputting your actions like when you fight an enemy you're just like running against them so it's like real time but it's happening super fast because every time you bump into them is like you're giving them damage they're giving you damage and then it's just all of the different tropes of like rpgs like distilled down to be as fast as possible in each individual mission and the last mission you do takes like oh it's only like five minutes but because the the whole game is so fast paced that five minute final mission seems like it takes forever and it's just a really cool game Uh, i believe it got ported steam and xbox 360 so on xbox 360 i think you can play just like the main mission the other missions were were not that great so i mean i'd recommend looking into it like spiral i think you'd like it just because you're a big rpg guy like i think you would find it just really fun that mm-hmm. it takes all the elements of an RPG that kind of removes all of... And Melvin, you might like it too, because you don't like long, drawn-out like level grinding and stuff. I mean, it's just really cool, unique game. There's really been nothing else like it. Um, is, it called, is it called Three Pump Chump? <laughs> no. no. <laughs> <laughs> no. <laughs> and there was a Spiral, sequel, too. Spiral ain't playing that old-ass game. <laughs> yeah, maybe not. It is, so it is based, so yeah, it's, uh, maybe it won't appeal to everybody. But they made a sequel to it on PSP that never came out in America. I think it got ported to Steam, but I don't play games on PC like at all. So I've never played it, but I'm I'm interested in playing it. Um, number two, I'm gonna go with Final Fantasy VI. I mean that game's just incredible. Like it has a huge cast of characters, and the way the game, the first half is linear. But then the second half opens up to where it's completely open and you can take whatever path you want to gather your cast of characters. And you don't need to do a lot of it. Like you can go and fight the end boss whenever you want, really. But it's in your best interest to find as many characters as you can to build your party up. And I mean, when the the halfway, I mean, it's an old ass game, but I won't spoil it. But the halfway point when the whole game shifts, I mean, the music that plays and just like the like the feeling that it gives i mean it, it's just it, it's an amazing game um but number one i gotta give it to super mario rpg it was the first rpg i ever played it's the only rpg i've played more than once i mean i love mario and this is just you're in the mario world and you're fighting all the familiar mario enemies and it was just super fun and this game when you fight you get an extra like if you time the button push you can do an extra attack and that has ingrained in me for all rpgs that that does something even when they don't so like if i'm playing final fantasy 6 every time i go to attack an enemy i'm pushing the button every time i attack them even though it does nothing just because that's like (laughs) that game 
like burned in my brain like you you do an extra button push to do like extra stuff when you attack but yeah super mario rpg the intro to that game is like my favorite intro of all time so it's it doesn't open up to a like a title screen you're getting in the thick of things you're fighting with bowser you're trying to save the princess and then when you beat that battle then it gives you the title screen and like the sword falls from the sky and it lands in the castle and then like the title screen show. I mean, it's just an amazing intro. Um, yeah, I, I think it's on like the super Nintendo classic. It's, it might be even on the switch on Nintendo switch online. I mean, if you haven't played it, it's, it's a must play. It's, it's an amazing RPG. All right, Emil, what you got for your top three RPGs? So for my top three, um, I too had trouble, uh, just trying to get like three that I've actually played, and I didn't even finish all three of them, but I finished uh, I finished one of them. So I'm gonna say Final Fantasy XI because playing with a group of friends online, it was so massive and it was just fun. And Holy Assassin actually got me into it along with Moose and Muff and everybody like Mark. Everybody got me into it. Um, that was fun. Um, it was so fun. It was yeah, awesome. You're just, you're just whole, hanging out, running around, doing yeah, whatever you can, you can with your any, buddies. Anyone, yeah. yeah, anyone, anywhere. Like, it was just fun. Like, you could just play at any time of the day. Somebody was on, you know? Um, so that one. And then um, I would go with uh, Xenoblade. Right now I'm halfway through. I plan to finish it hopefully by the end of February. Um, that exceeded my expectations of what i thought i was going to be playing so that holds a lot of weight right now for me and then witcher 3 would probably be my top one right now because that's what i beat that's what i really enjoyed um dude, even like the quests and everything and the main story and the side quests are just as good so i really had fun doing that as well so moose i know you played witcher 3 is, is that anywhere near your top three or where does that land um I'd put it somewhere in there, I guess. Honorable mention. Um, I didn't, I didn't really think about it when I, when I was, I was thinking about like more, like you know, all time for me. And it, I guess the the other games I mentioned were all old, right? So, um, I, I would include that in a, in a top five, probably. All right, cool. The whole RPG thing has evolved to a much broader category. Tell that yeah. the dark side. <laughs> he has he very yeah. strict requirements was, for what uh, he does. Yeah, is, yeah is I was not. gonna mention uh, Breath of the Wild because I saw that in some like reviews and stuff, but I stayed away from that. Dark side would. Oh, yeah. Uh, yeah, he would not allow it. Dark side would not, <laughs> would not allow that. I I haven't played Breath of the Wild. I heard it sucked. That's what Muff told me. Oh. <laughs> um. I, I pumped 175 Breath hours of, into that game. Breath of the Wild is shit, man. <laughs> <laughs> but from what I've heard, it sounds like uh, an action game. Yeah. <laughs> All right, so we're we're gonna shift things now into trivia. I forgot to mention, I also played Control. We did a deep dive. That game's incredible. Melvin's insane. Absolutely it's amazing. Insane. It's an amazing game. Play Control. It's you know they got like it's on, on PlayStation Plus right now. It's on Game Pass. You know you you can play it most likely. So give that a shot. But Bash, you got some trivia for us, so do you want to tell us what you got going on? Yeah, I got a, a list of six uh, NES games here. They're kind of on a theme. I need you to rank them in the uh, order of number of copies they sold overall oh in the entire world. Okay, we like got to... Uh, six games? Like as of today? Well, they stopped selling them 30 years ago, so as of then. <laughs> Too Come on, Dark Side. <laughs> Got him, <I>, Bask. <laughs> I, I put the list of games in the group chat if you want to look at that just to keep track of them better. But uh, oh, I, do, I do not see them in the group chat. Oh, they're in a picture. I, think I do not see a, the picture. He sent a picture. Brian's got that broke ass oh, internet. No, no, no. All right, on the phone. All right, never mind. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah. Ignore me. Okay, I just list Done. them off here. We got a uh, Castlevania one, Final Fantasy one, Mega Man one, RBI Baseball one, and Ducktales one. No, wait, like, and Tecmo Super Bowl. One. All right, so we're ranking so them. In what sold the most? 
Yeah, well, yeah, yeah. So from top to bottom, then what what do you guys think felt the most of all of these? Tecmo, number one, baby. You think Tecmo's number one? Yeah, I, yeah. I, I could see, oh, I could see it being so uh, too. RBI baseball. Stop smiling from ear to ear, man. Tecmo, baby. RBI, I could see it being RBI baseball as well. Um, because if we're talking worldwide, Japan loves the baseball. Um, not so much. Oh, that's true. Yeah, baseball. Yeah. Football is oh, mainly America. Football, yeah, but yeah, Japan doesn't America. usually like American-made games. Was RBI baseball made by a U.S. company? It was probably made by a Japanese company, though, right? I don't know. Freaking Nintendo, man. So, so what do you guys right. want to do first, so, Tecmo or RBI R- baseball? RBI. Tecmo, won't, yeah, Tecmo is probably going to be towards the bottom as we think about it because people in Japan are buying that shit. But America is bigger than Japan. <laughs> Not back then. <laughs> Games. America's more into sports now than they were back in 1990. You think so? I love, yeah, let's go RBI first, you think? Is, is this sales in America bash, or is this just is this all over the butt? It's, a, it's basically just Japan and America. The NES didn't really sell that well everywhere else. So. Uh, but, but this is including Japanese sales, is that right? Yeah, yeah. Okay, got it, got it, got it. So we're doing RBI so first? The most... The most sales, I think, would either be Castlevania or Mega Man's. That's what I would be leaning towards as well. I think those are a look baseball, back. Everybody fondly, loves baseball, though. I think, I think baseball RBI football, baseball was on a uh, a flat top unit. Um, flat top unit? Ah, shit. The top loader? Yeah, like you go up inside the Pizza Hut and you play the Donkey Kong. They also been had the RBI baseball that way. Oh, the cocktail yeah. cabinet? Huh? Brian's talking about <laughs> cocktail wieners. <laughs> Brian's using the fancy terminology, but yeah, the flat top. Yeah, I'm talking about little smokies right now. <laughs> little smokies, baby. All but, right, but, so what so, are we doing? So me and I, Muff are leaning towards Mega Man and Castlevania, but you guys are leaning towards the sports games. Is that right? Yeah. I'm leaning towards RBI, yeah. All right. You guys want to do RBI first? Sure. Yeah. Go ahead. All right, RBI Baseball number one. Are we going to follow that with Tecmo, Tecmo Super Bowl? No, I would think Mega Man. Mm. I think Tecmo might be toward the bottom because nobody in Japan is buying Tecmo Bowl. Yeah, I don't think football is not really popular in Japan. No, right? no. That's, that's got to no, account it's for something. No, I would say, yeah, that's RBI one, probably Mega Man two. In America alone, Tecmo Super Bowl was the shit. I mean, it yeah. woke people's eyes up. It was uh, huge. Watch DuckTales be number worldwide. one. <laughs> right. I, I could see DuckTales being higher than we think just because it's a, it's yeah. a, it's a license game, game right? and yeah. it came out in the 80s and you know and huge, people right? didn't know any better back then. They're just like, DuckTales, motherfucker. I, I mean, Final too. Fantasy 1 must have got big push, though. Right? Like, Yeah. I, I would think that's got to be worldwide a big one, too. This worldwide shit's fucking with me. All right, First, l- let's let's do RBI baseball number one. You guys good with that? Yep. Yeah. 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 All right, and then number number two. I mean, I'm I'm big on Castlevania and Mega Man. So Melvin, you were thinking Mega Man, right? I think it might be a bit bigger than Castlevania, but I don't know. That's just my guess. Mega Man had clothes and shit, and eventually. And... All right, so shit. RBI baseball number one. We, are we doing Mega Man one number two? Yeah, Mega Man number two. All right, Mega Man number two. Number three, um, if we're putting Tecmo Bowl closer to the bottom, um, what do you guys think of between DuckTales, Final Fantasy, Castlevania? Uh, fucking DuckTales. That's a curveball for Probably me. Probably DuckTales. Yeah, I was thinking DuckTales yeah, DuckTales. Yeah, DuckTales. It's like right because the middle. dang old cartoon going to make a sell, even if it's suck a duty. Yeah, All the right. name alone is worth it, right, Muff? Muff yeah. right. Bottom three. Muff then we're sales. Looking at Final <laughs> Fantasy. Well, <laughs> Tecmo Super Bowl and Castlevania. I'm thinking Castlevania 1's got to be. I'm thinking Castlevania, then Final Fantasy, then Tecmo Super Bowl. Yeah, I'm, yeah, I'm good with that. Left. I think Final Fantasy, the first one, man, that game was not fun. <laughs> All right, Bash. Right, uh, so we're, uh, we're, we're doing RBI. Are we anywhere close, Man. Bash? Then DuckTales, Castlevania, then Final Fantasy, then Tecmo. We yeah. Got- 
Okay, uh, I'll start at the bottom. The lowest last place is Mega Man 1 at 810,000 wow. copies. Wow. How many the copies? series really didn't take off until the second one. So. 8,000, it sounded like, right? 800, 810,000. Oh, 810,000, I was going to okay. say. Okay. Okay, the next one is Final Fantasy 1 at 840,000. All right, so we I think a lot of the game. time RPGs cost more back then, so I think that might have done it. That's still pretty yeah. good for an RPG back then, I think. And there, it was like nothing in the U.S. probably. Then number three is Tecmo Super Bowl at wow. 1.19 million. Oh shit! Yeah. I think what happened here was a lot of people got the original Tecmo Bowl, and then they didn't mm-hmm. upgrade, and they just play a multiplayer anyway. That's that was kind of the curveball I threw on that one. Isn't the first in the series. So. <laughs> not everybody's rich. Like, right. Not everybody's rich like Muff, you know, buying all the Tecmo Bowls. True. Hundred <laughs> percent true. Not everybody's a slut like you, Brian, but somebody's got to do it. <laughs> How many did you eat, Muff? How many sluts did you eat? Sluts? No, I don't know, like four. <laughs> okay, the next one up is uh, Castlevania at 1.23 million copies. <laughs> so we got that one right. We got that in the fourth place. We got that one right. Okay, and... Uh, Number two, second to highest, is DuckTales at 1.68 wow. million copies. People love them licensed games. Oh, yeah. I think I think I still got that one upstairs with tail spins. <laughs> and number one is RBI Baseball at 2.2 million copies. Dang. Crazy. Wow. So we've got yeah. that. We hey, got that's all that matters. Yeah. Good job. That's, that's all that matters. We've got number that's, one, man. Not terrible. That's right. we got number one. If you're not that's first, you're last. What made it stand out also, the cartridge was the black with the slant. It was completely different. That's, that Tengen. Tengen or whatever. Right. It looks like probably like at least like three quarters of the copies were sold in Japan from like looking at the numbers. So. Damn, that's pretty crazy. Japan love baseball. Japan yeah. love muff. <laughs> muff love Japan. Muff love Japan. Muff baby. love Japan. VR, baby. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So that's going to do it for this episode of Beat of the Month. Oh, muff, I did want to mention something before us? we go. Um, I noticed that... Uh, uh, I gotta go I to didn't... the bathroom really bad. <laughs> <laughs> Do not edit that out. <laughs> yeah, don't edit that out. <laughs> <laughs> Why did you go about this before? He's about the system, <laughs> so... Left. Literally left. I gotta go. Look at the toddler, man. My daughter doesn't <laughs> think she's dead, dude. <laughs> you got the garage. Just go out the back door. <laughs> yeah, you should have a bucket for that shit. We just see steam bucket. rising. <laughs> we just hear it like rather than peeing in the yard, he pees in a bucket. <laughs> What's that? You wanted to say something. Oh yeah, because it's RPG month. Um I noticed that uh they removed uh from Cyberpunk twenty seventy seven the mod to let you have sex with Keanu Reeves. Yeah. And I just want to make a call to everyone that's listening to encourage them to put that mod back. <laughs> well, I, I, I returned the game after the, I found out they took the mod out. Yeah, because, I mean, eventually when I do play it, you know, a year or two down the road, I want to have sex with Keanu Reeves. Oh, yeah. That's a, that's a very good point. Very good point. Why would they take that out? They didn't want to piss him off. Yeah, you know he's that's a, that's the reason he's a celebrity, you know. Yeah, he's a celebrity. They he's, didn't want they didn't want the to one. ruin. Yeah, they didn't want to ruin any relationship that they could have ever, I guess, with any other celebrity. Well, maybe at the start of the game, they should like, pick one of these pills, red or blue, and one of them you get to fuck them in the ass. One of them you get to <laughs> kill them, bitch. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Right. Muff, Muff would pick the one that he'd, Is that some fantasy he'd, or something? He'd, he'd redo his save. And you know it's the blue pill if you're going to fuck him. Ding ding. How right, was I'm the back. flow, Brian? What did I miss? Uh, Muff's going to bang his channel. <laughs> with the blue pill. M- Flower Muff? power to the blue pill, yo. Muff, did you already let people know where they can find us on social media? <laughs> Man, I, I thought you shit your pants. I was about to. 
I was about to have an accident in the garage. It would have froze to my freaking leg here. <laughs> You'd be like dumb and dumber. It's... We're there, man. Just go, man. <laughs> Just go. It's warm. Yeah. Uh-huh. All right, y'all. Say, uh, we dot com now, baby. It's a beat of the month dot com. Everything you want to find us, we up inside the Twitter. We up inside the Xbox, the f- Facebook, uh, Good Pods, uh, Scheme, and Skypes, and I don't even know what I'm <laughs> saying anymore. Beat of the month dot com. You can find all the links to everything. Y'all have a good time to listen to us. There you go, beatofthemonth.com. We're official. That's if you want to find us directly man. on other stuff, it's Beat of the Month. Otherwise, on Twitter, it's Beat of the Months with an S. Um, you want to shoot us an email, beatofthemonth at gmail.com. So thanks, everyone. This has been another episode of the Beat of the Month podcast. Catch us in two weeks. We're going to do a deep dive of Slay the Spire. So Moose, Emil. That's our no. deep dive? Moose and Melvin. This game better live up to the hype, man. That's all I can say. Yeah. Gotta get on that, yeah. get on that hype train, baby. Yeah, Melvin's a hype guy, man. That I'm just like... on the train, baby. <laughs> He's along that for the ride. Like <laughs> on the train. All right, thanks, everyone. We will catch you next episode, two weeks, Slay the Spire. All right. Pasta lasagna, don't get any on you. <laughs> beat of the month. Beat of the month. Gotta have me my beat of the month. Like a, got, so like a truck backing up or something? Yeah, yeah I hear that. <laughs> That's me, sorry. They're the, the fucking people out here just clearing shit out. Rich fucker. Oh, yeah. Oh, snow out there. Yeah. Rich guy. Plowing snow in the middle of the night for Spiral. He's fucking rich as fuck. Yeah, like, oh shit, it's Spiral lives <laughs> yeah. here. We better make sure it's clean. <laughs> <You know? laughs> beat of the month. Beat of the month. Gotta have me my beat of the month. So I'm I on YouTube right now, and I just checked out the piece of the month, and I see my face plastered on there from 11 <laughs> hours ago. <laughs> that must have been uh, Melvin. Yeah. Beat of the month. Beat of the month. Gotta have me my beat of the month. But uh, th- there's an achievement in Near Automata where um, it's a very pervy game. Like you, um, you get an achievement for looking up her skirt like 50 times. <laughs> that's a buff uh, game right there man mm-hmm. <laughs> so like did you she look does up how to get that or did you just get that naturally so here's a funny story is that so i'm doing the achievements i'm looking at this achievement like oh what the fuck i gotta do this and you like you move the camera so you look under her skirt and then she does this animation where she's like you know don't look there she brushes brushes you off so i'm doing it for like an hour i'm like i've gotta hit 50 by now what the fuck <laughs> like yeah. Why is this not? Is this is this a fucking? Uh, is, is I got some sort of like fucked up game here. It's not uh, unlocking. And then I looked up the achievement. I had done it on like on the first day I played it. <laughs> <laughs> That's crazy. You must have missed it then when it said you got the achievement. Yeah, it probably popped up. I didn't know what it meant. <laughs> no need to buy that one, right? You're just always looking up them skirts. Mm-hmm. Did, it, did it give you a count, or did it just give you the achievement of like 50? No, it just give you achievement. Oh, okay. That'd be funny if it's like 200 or something. <laughs> <Did it> like. <laughs>